Hello, my brothers and sisters across the beautiful earth that I'm now walking on that is filled with snow and it is freezing. Hello to everyone who's watching this video, peoples of the earth and peoples of the internet, no matter where you are in America, South America, Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in the moon, and wherever you are, you could be in a submarine for all I know. Do you know that the one true God has achieved salvation for his entire creation for his only begotten son, Jesus Christ? Do you know that? Do you know what happened on the cross almost 2,000 years ago? The entire old creation, me, you, every single person, every single animal and celestial being, and even Satan himself, died with Jesus Christ on the cross. This is not a choice that we made. It happened violating our free will, which we do not have. We all died with Christ on the cross, regardless if you choose to believe it or not. In fact, belief comes through faith. And that faith was given to us, those who believe in this. Faith is given to us. So the believers have been predestined. The entire old creation has been crucified with Christ. And the entire old creation which, which died with Christ has been resurrected with Christ on the cross. When the one true God, the Father of our Lord Christ Jesus, resurrected him. So it's a done deal. The proof of his resurrection is the proof of the salvation of the entire creation which God created. Every single being, every single person, I don't care who it is or what they've done, sin is dead. Christ became sin for all of us and we all died with him. When Christ died, sin went to the grave with him, just like these gravestones. Sin is dead and in the grave. When God res re resurrected his son, Three days later, he left sin in the grave. It's no longer there. Sin is no longer an issue. <laughs> it's beautiful. Be at peace, all of you, whether you've been given the faith to believe this or not. One day you will. It says in Scripture, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, that God is the Savior of all mankind. All mankind. Every single man and woman and child that has ever lived, is living or will live, God is the saviour of all of them. And it says especially of believers, not exclusively, especially of the believers. That includes all of mankind. The believers have been given a special salvation and that special salvation is to be a part of Christ's body, to reconcile the entire creation, the entire universe, everyone that's dead will be resurrected they will hear the good news. They will hear the, the evangel. The entire old creation has died with Christ on the cross. This is not a choice that we made. Salvation is not something that we can earn and it's not something that we can lose. It is entirely of God through his son, Christ Jesus. It's not something that we can boast in. It's not something that we can brag about to our friends. I'm a believer and you're not, no. The only reason that I'm a believer is because God gave me the faith of Jesus Christ himself to believe this, even though that I have zero evidence, apart from just me believing it and reading scripture, of course, which has been preserved for us for almost, well, for thousands of years now. And through Paul's evangel, through his letters, which he was severed for the nations, the evangel of the untraceable riches of Christ to the nations, telling us that salvation is entirely of God. We are not underneath the law. Law is temporary. The reason why the law came in is so that the sin could increase so that God can lavish his grace onto us even more to make it more apparent just how useless we are by ourselves, that we cannot earn salvation so God can save his entire creation through his son. Isn't that beautiful? Everything has a purpose. He's the creator of good and evil, life and death. Everything. Everything has its reasons. God is the saviour of all mankind, especially of believers. It's through grace, through the grace of God Almighty, through the faith, not our faith, through the faith of Jesus Christ himself are we saved. And this is not out of us. It's not out of me. It's not out of me going to all these churches or not going to churches. It's not out of you praying 25 times a day or not eating this food and abstaining from alcohol. It's not you not doing those things or doing those things. It's entirely out of God. I don't care what you've done in this life. I don't care if you're a serial killer. I don't care. Salvation has been accomplished for you by God through his son for all of creation. And eventually, in God's own time, at the end of God's plan, 
all of creation will come back to him because all of creation came out of him. All of creation was created in Christ and Christ died. That means that the entire creation died with Christ. And that's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's the greatest news that you will ever hear. God's love for you. Now listen to this. God's love for you is unconditional. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? It means under no condition will it ever drop. His love for you is not faint. It's not false. No matter what you do, I don't care, and I mean this, and God means this too, no matter what you do, you can go out there and be the worst person imaginable. You could, have, you could literally be the Antichrist, and he still loves you. In fact, he needs the man of lawlessness. He needs Satan and Hitler and Judas Iscariot to be the people that they are in order to accomplish God's will. Every plan needs a villain. Can you imagine what watching Star Wars without Darth Vader it wouldn't be very good now, would it? It'd be quite a boring story. That's exactly the role that all the evil people that are doing all those evil things in the world and to you, they're doing it because it's God's will. Does that mean that he enjoys it? Like he enjoys watching the suffering and all of this? No, of course not. But it's temporary. The suffering is required. The evil is required. If there was no sin, if there was no death, if we were not sinners, and if we were not un under the curse of Adam, because Adam sinned, which put us all underneath him, and it wasn't our choice, then even God would not need to send his son to save us. And we would not know the unconditional love of God. We would not know the grace of God. We wouldn't know him. This is why everything is happening the way that it is, because God has planned it. All of creation is in accord with the counsel of God's will. Everything, from the good and the bad to the big and the small. Everything. And that's beautiful. That's the peace of God, knowing that it's all under control. Even the most horrific events and acts that things have perpetrated across all of history, it's all in accord with the counsel of his will. Does that mean that he enjoys watching the evil go on? No, of course not. God breaks your leg so he can heal your leg, so you can be appreciative of him. If you didn't have a broken leg, you would never know the saving power of God. If we were not sinners, if we were not under the curse of Adam, which is death, God couldn't save us. And if he couldn't save us, how are we going to know the love and grace of God? We have to be put under sin and death so that God can take us out of it through his son, Christ Jesus. Death has already been done away with. It's just still here, as you see around me, these gravestones. But it will be abolished. Death and sin have already been defeated. Sin is already done away with. Sin is dead and in the grave. It's no longer a part of creation now. God sees no sin in anyone, not in you or me. Sin has been done away with. And eventually, because of what happened on the cross, even death, will be abolished. Death itself, the greatest of the enemies, and Satan will be reconciled back to God. All of creation will be at peace with itself, and all of creation will be at peace with, with their creator, the exact same way that God is at peace with you right now. No matter what you are doing, I don't care. God is at peace with you. He needs you to be you, and one day you will come back to him. When he gives you the faith, at his own appointed time, you will come back to him. Whether you've been appointed to be a believer or not, I don't care what you are or who you are. I don't care if you're black or white, gay or straight, or Muslim or Christian or Jewish or Hindu or European or African or Asian. I don't care what you are or who you are or what you've done. You will be reconciled back to God because it's God's will. And God always accomplishes his will. You can't change his plan. This has been his plan since from the beginning and before the beginning. He declares the end from the beginning. And the end is the consummation. When all of creation comes back to God, all of creation is immortal in Christ. Everything, every single person, every single animal, every single angel, that is a fact. If you don't believe this and you're still watching this video, that's okay. God doesn't want you to believe it right now but you will. God has not granted you the repentance, which means to have a change of mind. He will change your mind when he has appointed the time to do it. When that time comes to pass, you will see and you will believe because it's God's will.
not because it's your will, not because you don't want to believe or because you want to believe. You will believe when God wants you to believe. I was an atheist for most of my life. I became a Christian for a little while and then God pulled me out of that. I did not believe for many years and then God pulled me out of that. I am now at peace with my Creator. I understand what happened on the cross. I am free. I could go out there and do evil things, but I don't, most of the time. <laughs> but even though that I do, I just ignore it, because I know that God is at peace with me no matter what. And that gives me a love and an understanding of who my Father is that no religion can provide for me. No pastor or priest or bishop or imam or rabbi can teach me. No one can teach me this. Only God through his Holy Spirit can teach you this. And if it's God's will, he will teach you this through this video. And that is my prayer that awakens at least one of you out there, or it will remind many of the believers out there that God is at peace with you, he loves you, and he doesn't love you with a feigned heart. God does not lie. When he says that he's at peace with you, which he's always been at peace with you, because you are his creation, he molded you into the person that you are right now, from the same lump, which is all of creation, came from the same lump. He makes vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. He makes uh, the Apostle Paul and Adolf Hitler and Ted Bundy and the 12 Apostles and me and you. That role which we have is not greater than anyone else's. The vessel of dishonor is just as important as the vessel of honor. You can't have the vessel of honor without the vessel of dishonor. You can't have good without evil. You need to have evil in order for there to be good. Because if all there was was good, then you wouldn't know that it was good because there was no evil to have that contrast. Everything is in accord with the counsel of his will. He is at peace with you right now. Right now. Without you having to approach him or accomplish to do anything. You don't have to join a religion to have a relationship with the one true God. You don't have to be intelligent or wise or brave. You don't have to be holy by your own works. <laughs> well, you're holy and righteous, the believers, of course. And eventually all of creation will come into God's righteousness. All of creation has been made right from sin. Sin is dead and in the grave and all of creation will come into God's own righteousness. Currently, it's only on the believers, but eventually all of creation will be dragged into it literally dragged into it of course you will want to be that of course there's many people that don't want to believe in this because they're stubborn because they'd rather believe in their own works of the flesh instead of the one work the one finished complete work on the cross but they're that way because god made them that way you know it's all about that contrast and everyone has their role they're the vessels of dishonor the greatest Enemies of the cross, the true cross of Christ, is the Christians and the Christian religion. And that's uh, Catholicism and Protestantism and Orthodoxy and all the other denominations, like 50,000 of them or whatever. They're all enemies of the cross because they don't preach the true cross. They always say, yes, Jesus Christ died for your sins, but if you don't do this and this and that, or if you do this and this and that, you'll lose your salvation or you're not saved or you have to do this, you have to be baptized, you have to do all this. No, no. God has already accomplished salvation for you and there's nothing you can do to change it. I don't care who, what, what, what you've done in this life. I don't care who you are, that's a fact. So I will end this video with this. Be at peace with God. Be conciliated back to God because he loves you. Love, grace and peace to you all. Love, grace, and peace to you all. I don't care what you've done. God loves you unconditionally and it will never stop. If you sin, if the sin increases, God's grace will super exceed it. You can't out-sin God's grace. Love, grace, and peace to you all.